Did I need to incense the altar? Yeah, but uh, it's okay. Okay. Forgot. Sorry. There will be incense at all their parts. <laughs> Very good. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. My brothers and sisters, we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. As we come to celebrate these holy mysteries of our faith, let us acknowledge our sins that we may better celebrate these holy mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Chelsea's day oh. of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. 
we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seen things of the world, receive our prayer. We are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God has raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. That we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? He gave them a piece of baked fish, he took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. So this gospel puts us in media res, as they say, in the middle of things. And um, we're in chapter 24 of Luke's gospel. So the two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way. So this is part of a much longer reading. 
And it begins with the disciples meeting Jesus on the road to Emmaus. And I think most of you have, are familiar with that story. But, you know, on the day of Easter, uh, two disi Jesus' disciples are walking to a town called Emmaus. They are um, presumably, it's a short journey because you can't go that very far if you're Jewish on a Sabbath. And the, uh, excuse me, it wasn't Sabbath. I forget that. It could be as long as they wanted, long as they wanted. But the Lord appears by them, and as with Mary Magdalene, they don't recognize him. Their eyes are covered over. They can't see who it is. They think it's some stranger. But he sets their heart on fire as he goes talking with them, as they asked, you know, he, he asked what, 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 what's going on, and they talk about Jesus and their failed hopes that he was going to deliver them from the Romans. We hope the establishment of the kingdom of Israel. But then we hear, like, his tomb is empty. The women who have, are part of our group have seen a vision of angels who say he's alive. And then he explains the scriptures to them, and they go all the way to the, after, to the evening when um, they invite him in, although he seems like he is going on further. And as he takes bread, he blesses it, breaks it, and gives it to them. And he, all of a sudden, the scales, spiritual scales fall from their eyes, and they see who is with them, Jesus himself, who immediately vanishes. And then they run back to Jerusalem, and there we are. There we are in this story. And whenever the disciples of Emmaus are written, I wish they had, I wish the scriptures would continue a couple of verses more so that you realize at the end of their telling of the story, Jesus appears. He's right there, you know, to their shock and amazement, you know, and all of a sudden now all the apostles are able to see him. Uh, there are many, there's lots of stories of appearances on this amazing Easter day. Jesus is extremely busy. I'm so glad he had a glorified body to do it in. And, and this is in some ways, I think, what the heart of this gospel is about. What does the resurrection look like? What kind of a thing is it? Uh, are we simply talking about the Son of God becoming what he was before? No, we're not. We're talking about something that changes the human race. And so, um, you know, while they were still speaking about this, he stood there and said to them, peace be with you. Uh, they think they're seeing a ghost. Why are you troubled? Look at my hands and my feet. First of all, I have flesh and blood and bones. Now, I'm not bleeding over the floor either. So that's an interesting thing. Uh, but ghosts don't, he says, have flesh and bones, as you see I do. There is a real body there. Now the question is, is it at all human? Is it at all human? Um, what, came for, what came forth from the tomb on Easter Day? What came forth uh, that was seen by Mary Magdalene, was seen by the disciples at Emmaus, was seen by the apostles in this gospel, um, is not the divine nature, because the divine nature can't be seen with human eyes. I think Thomas' gospel last week made that clear. You know, that Thomas sees the body of a glorified man and confesses what he can't see, that is the presence of his Lord and God. That the voice that is speaking to him in the upper room is, in fact, the voice that spoke to Moses from the burning bush and the voice that summoned creation out of nothing when the word made all things in the beginning. That, uh, but was coming out of the tomb is visible, is touchable, is recognizably in the form of Jesus. And this, although, although it's, um, it seems to be a body that is visible as he desires it to be visible, and so we have uh, what comes out of the tomb is, uh, that is, can be seen and touched, is the glorified humanity. Now, is this human in any way that we would recognize it? And this comes to the point of where Jesus asks for a snack. Now, um, this is actually one of the great signs in the scripture that you are truly alive. 
If you remember when Jesus cures the daughter of Jairus, when he raises her from the dead, what does he have her, what does he tell the people around afterwards? Give her something to eat. If they think I just revivified a corpse and this is some kind of unhuman, undead thing walking around, see if she can eat. Yeah, she can eat. She is truly human. Um, when, and this is from the beginning. One of the things about the human race that is different from the angels, which is different from the world of spirits, which is different from God himself, is our need to feed. And so God from the beginning marks as one of the signs of human life the gift of food. He fills the garden with trees and says in chapter 2 of Genesis, eat, eat from all the trees, except that one in the middle that'll kill you. So eating and drinking is something that mark being human in a human way in the scriptures. Perhaps the most, uh, one of the most significant ones, I think, is uh, Exodus chapter 24. So this is in the time of Moses, and Moses has just brought the people to the foot of Mount Sinai to meet God. The uh, people are already organized in uh, groups, and they have elders set over them, judges, uh, who then, Moses says, are to gather together because they're going to meet God. So after Moses consecrates all the people by spring, by by reciting the covenants to them, by them agreeing to the covenants and he's sprinkling them with the blood of sacrifices to consecrate them for their meeting. He goes up on the mountain with 70 elders of Israel and uh, beginning with Aaron, his brother, um, Nah uh, Nadab, Abihu, and the others. And it says that although Moses went up further in the mountain, these chosen Israelites, these leaders, these judges, met God. They saw the living God and were not struck down. This God who supposedly you can't see face to face without dying. And it says, and they ate and drank. Now some of our translations say they could still eat and drink which gets to the point of, yeah, they were still alive in a human way, that they were, they were not slain. This was not some kind of after-death experience for them. Uh, no, they ate and drank. Now, this eating and drinking actually has a shape in mem the mem memory of Israel's worship in the showbread, which was part of the appurtenance of the, t of the tent of meeting in Moses' time and then the temple. These 12 loaves of bread representing the 12 tribes of Israel, which were refreshed every week, which were eaten by the priests in a sacred place with flagons of wine, and which recall God's kindness. Um, uh, I think it's Babylonian Talmud that recalls in the time of Jesus while the temple was still there, at big feasts, the priests would take out these 12 loaves on their golden table, show them to the crowd, and tell them, see how much the Almighty loves you, how much your God loves you. That this is a foretaste of the time when God's elect should all be brought into the world to come and feast with God, living not from ordinary food and drink, but from the very presence of him who is deathless and the source of life. And, um, and it is by these powers that the humanity of Christ is resurrected, glorified, and now is shown, like, in a sense, like these loaves were to the people. The Father shows his Son in this glorified humanity that they may take heart, that they may see how much their God loves them. They who, um, remember, turned and ran at the crucial moment. They who, just as much as Judas in some ways, betrayed the love they owed their Lord in the garden. And now, after his passage through death, the Lord comes and accepts their hospitality actually forces them to be hospitable, <laughs> forces them to take him, uh, to take, uh, to, to give him food with all that means. 
Now, it's saying, the saints of the church readily say God, Jesus pr certainly doesn't probably need food in the glorified body. But the sign of it remains, the sign of union with those with whom you feast, and a portent of what is to come, that God, in fact, all these prophecies are going to be fulfilled. You know, notice that um, in chapter 22 of Luke, before at the Last Supper, before Jesus dies, he tells the apostles that he is appointing a kingdom for them in which they will sit as ju judging the 12 tribes of I Israel, eating and drinking with him in his kingdom. And this, in a sense, is a foretaste of all of that. You know, he has, uh, he has not dismissed them from their posts as judges, as apostles, as leaders and elders of the Christian people. Rather, rather, he opens up a path now that these things that he has already prophesied, which they, in their bad judgment, turn their back on, there is still a place for them. There is repentance and the gift of forgiveness for the apostles and everyone to whom they will preach this repentance, this turning from ignorance and darkness into the light of God, this turning from the deeds of wickedness, you know, the strong ones and the weak ones, like, you know, lack of courage and a failure to stand with the one you love, the one who loves you first, Jesus. You know, forgiveness for all of them on this blessed Easter day when he shows himself in his body to the apostles. The, uh, the Lord, of course, brings the fullness of who he is now wherever he goes. As one uh, Christian writer puts it, there is now no distance between matter and deity because of what Christ has done in his own body, in his own resurrection, in his glorification that heaven is close to earth wherever Christ is. And he who asks, um, who asked food of the apostles on this Sunday provides a feast for us on this Sunday. But the same Christ who appears to the apostles in the upper room makes himself present on this altar. You know, body, blood, soul, and divinity and under mere appearances of bread and wine as Thomas saw the divinity of God veiled in glorified flesh on Thomas Sunday. So in the Holy Sacrament, we see under the veil of the appearances of bread and wine, the living Christ, the glorified Christ, the timeless Christ who steps into time to bring down heaven close and to embrace your hearts with his own hospitality, with his own love, with his commitment to you. And in this, uh, you follow all those who have gone before you in this. You know, you follow the apostles, you know, who, uh, you know, who fed Christ on this day and continue to be fed by Christ. I, I've often wondered if there is a connection between uh, this supper that Christ receives from his disciples and the breakfast that Christ will prepare for them with fish on the shores of Galilee. That's another, that's another sermon. But you have um, you know, these apostles who became successors to the, to the elders of Israel, to the judges of Israel, who stood in the place on, in their own time uh, with not only providing uh, Christ's example, Christ's witness, but also the ministry of the great judges, Samson, Gideon, Gideon uh, the kings of Israel and their, and their retinues, you know, David and Solomon. Uh, these apostles who become the elders and princes of the Christian church, who lead the way in, in faithfulness, repentance, and martyrdom, they uh, show the path for all the saints who follow uh, you know, for um, you know, St. Thomas Aquinas, for uh, St. Dominic, for St. Patrick, for uh, St. Cecilia, for all the saints whose images you can find on the walls of this church, and thousands and thousands more, um, and in whose train 
you and I are called to follow, to be witnesses of the goodness of Christ, the holiness and dignity of the humanity that has been wedded to God forever and of repentance for sin and rejection of the serpent's darkness. You know, uh, to teach the world these things and to show it in every age. This is the age in which Christ uh, prepares a feast for us, summons us to eat and drink in the presence of deity, and then to go out into the world to preach repentance and the light of God to its furthest ends. Let's think about that as we continue with our Sunday, as we continue with our life with the Savior who makes himself present for us today, body, blood, soul, and divinity under these sacramental veils. to renew the faith of our baptism in the words of the creed. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified unto Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's say before our Father in heaven the needs of our world, our church, our family, and friends. For the church, that all of her members may live their baptismal promises faithfully. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country, that we may work to build a just society that seeks the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from the war and for an end to all strife and violence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families, especially for those experiencing any financial hardship or other difficulties, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and injured, that they may find relief and comfort from the healing rays of Christ's resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may find rest in the peace of the risen Christ. Let us pray for, to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the repose of the soul of J. Bruce Horner, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, hear the prayers of your holy church, gathered together by the power of the cross of Jesus Christ under the bright cloud of the Holy Spirit to worship you, the Father of light, from whom every good gift comes. We make our prayer in the holy and healing name of Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever.
Thank you for your service. I got this. Sacred Veni Mysterium Eir Sificiamo, Divinitatis Consortes, Qui Humanitatis Nostri, Fieri Dignatis Esparteps. Blessed be the Lord God of creation, the goodness we have received. Bread, the wine we are here. Fruit of thine work in the hands of become our spiritual bread. Lava me domine, abene cutata me, becato me amunda me. Toc ragum gwe cihirande, cihin trocar arm, rina varhas, rima cli. Bray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of, the, of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, he showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, 
overcome with paschal joy. Every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Lord, that you, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you first, for, firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Earl, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and, praying their, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those who have chosen through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Resurrection, 
you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admittest, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall. Corpus Christi, custodian main victim eternum, amen. Sanguis Christi, custodian main vita, eternum, amen. Christ, the body of Christ. <clears throat> you receive him, the body of Christ, the body of Christ. But it may not bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
<clears throat> Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. No. <clears throat> so we have some announcements, and then I get something from the bishop. So first of all, uh, the Knights of Columbus will host a spaghetti dinner on Saturday, April 20th, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. in Patrick Hall. Reservations are suggested, and I would say appreciated, I imagine. The next uh, craze, C-R-A-S-E, safety training, will be held on Saturday, April 27th from noon to 3 p.m. Please call the office to reserve your spot. For details and all other announcements, please take home a copy of the bulletin. So the bishop sent us some materials, but I just want to focus on the, the, the heart of what he's asking us to do. So this is uh, supposed to be a weekend to focus on the problems of uh, trafficking, human trafficking in the country, and those things which flow from it, um, and especially things like pornography, because a lot of people who are trafficked in our system uh, are trafficked both in reality and in online uh, for feeding of these uh, horrible, addictive, and family family and soul-destroying habits. So the bishop wants us to be aware of the dangerous effects of pornography on marriage and the family, and how it affects brain development in young people. Secondly, uh, you know, he, he emphasizes that pornography and human trafficking are among the direct attacks to the human person that we see in the present age. And in many ways, this is uh, characteristic specifically of our age attacks on the dignity of the human person. You see this in, a, in abortion, you see this in the, in the, uh, in the persecution of, the relig of religious people, you see this in um, free, free speech problems, and you also see it very powerfully in, with open borders, we've all kind, got kinds of unregulated unre um, crime going on, no matter what, I don't care what, where you stand politically, but the fact is, that we've got drugs trafficked, we've got people trafficked, we've got all kinds of things that destroy uh, human dignity. Um, and uh, the, the bishop also wishes us to, you know, <laughs> to realize that, you know, if you don't have, if you have less of a drug problem if you don't have a market for drugs, you'll have less of a, porn of a pornography problem if you have less of a market for it. And so he encourages us to look to ourselves and seek repentance for our own sins and whatever participation we may have had in any of these evils. Uh, and he emphasizes the sacrament of penance and reconciliation is available, is available to receive God's forgiveness and a pattern for breaking these habits of sin which many a times seem to have in us a, a, a compulsive quality to them. That's for a whole nother mission. Um, so the sacrament of uh, God's forgiveness and mercy and grace gives us strength to persevere in good re resolutions and our own chastity. And finally, resources are available from the Office of Evangelization to help begin conversations about healing and protecting families against these issues. And you may find this at columbuscatholic.org, which is the diocesan uh, website, at safe-haven, safe-haven on the Columbus Diocese website. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The mass is ended, go in. The mass is ended, go in peace. Thanks be to God.